I think one of the biggest things is you don't want to be going heavy on protein and fat. Like, it's really carbohydrate that's most important, but you can mix in protein and fat just to break it up. There's a time and place for it, I think, especially really long runs like 100 milers. It's nice to kind of have those mini meal things that provide a little bit more sustenance, like just fill you up more, but you still got to, you know, whether it's gels or bars or drinks that you're getting carbohydrate, those, those forms too, because again, you can utilize the, the fat that we have stored on our body to get you know, fat, fat in the muscles. It's not like you need to eat a bunch of fat while you're on the race course, but it's nice to mix it up because the carbohydrates can get monotonous um, and people get burnt out on sweet stuff. So you're mixing in different types of carbohydrates. So, you know, whether it's potatoes that aren't as sweet, because um, if you're doing sweet gels and sweet blocks and the, the sweet train can get a little hard to always stomach. And then a lot of times it comes down to, you just have to do it every 20, 30 minutes get that carbohydrate in. So for a lot of people, it's somewhere between 15 to 25 grams every 20, 30 minutes. So playing around with how much, um, but most often people aren't doing enough carbohydrate. And so that's, that comes back to the beginning of like, ideally you shouldn't have to worry about like, is something vegetarian, plant-based, vegan? Um, the bigger issue is like, what's that mix of carbohydrate incorporating small amounts of fat and protein, but not going overboard with that. And then fluids, of course. So making sure you get enough water. A good rule of thumb there is like looking at conditions. What's your body like? How much do you sweat? Um, how much are you losing? Because you could do anywhere from, you know, 20 ounces per hour. Some people can get by with a little less, but you know, somewhere around 20 ounces to 30 ounces. Um, you can get into the 40 ounces plus for some people, um, but that would be more in like extreme environments, you know, where the heat and the humidity are super high, but it's not uncommon to do higher levels like that. And then making sure you're getting enough electrolytes too is super key. Um, like some people are using maybe, you know, gels or bars that have a small amount. You might need a supplement with capsules, um, getting that sodium in in another way. And sodium is the most important electrolyte, but. You know, people play with adding a little potassium, calcium, and things like that. So um, it's kind of like with carbohydrate being the main macronutrient, um, sodium is your main electrolyte that you should be focused on. And I know, and sometimes here in the UK, um, or a place where it's cooler, the tendency is not to incorporate electrolytes or think, oh, I didn't want to eat as much or drink as much, it's cooler out, um, but you still need to do that. And then as anybody who's you know, experienced really being cold and hypothermic, you know, big reason you need to keep the body heat going is by fueling it through metabolism and getting carbohydrates and getting fuel in. So, um, yeah, the worst thing you can do is when you're getting colder or being in harsh environments that are wet and rainy and cold is like, you know, just stopping eating and drinking. And that's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. And then when you're cold and you can't open gels and bars, it's like, it's really a snowball effect. And it's, it's really pretty dangerous because, yeah, those of us who've been in that situation, like when you can't open things and you can't, you know, eat, it's like, and you don't like, oh, it's too cold. I don't want to eat. I don't want to take that energy. It's like, well, you're just cascading. It's just going to get worse and worse. I think it's it very specific to each person because what I might have may not suit someone else. And also what I might have in a race sometimes doesn't work in the next race, which is so irritating. There are some people who are really lucky and they have like cast iron stomachs, like Pete, my husband. He can eat loads of calories and it won't affect him. Whereas for me, it is, has always been an issue. So I do try and start off with maybe solids if it's a really long race. So in the Autumn 100, then I went on to liquids, but I always keep my salts up, um, but not over salt because I've made that mistake as well. And that's not good. Um, and also um, liquid. So I know roughly how many calories I should be having an hour and how much carbohydrates I should be having an hour and I just try and stick to that. But to be honest, the last few hours of a race, it's just I get whatever I can down me and that might be flat coke and that's fine. Yeah. So is anything that you've done that you just think never again, nutrition-wise, on an ultra? Um, I've left it too long before I have started eating. Um, and then it's very hard to catch up with that, um, especially with um, fluid as well. If you get dehydrated, um, I can feel it when I get dehydrated. I just get really, really hot and I start burning. 
it's really quite hard to get back from that. So it's just keeping on top of it um, all, all the time. Um, and if that's just a little bit, a little bit often is great. And, and also take your time when you're doing something less challenging. So if you're hiking up a slope, which isn't too hard, that's when you should try and get in your food and drink rather than when you're running really, really fast. I'm really bad at nutrition. I prefer, I feel like when I'm eating and drinking, it gets in the way of me just running. So yeah, if I, this is, this is advice from other people and I don't listen to it, but I know it's the right advice. Like when you're training, train nutrition wise as if you were racing. So I often don't, I don't eat when I'm training, but in a race I eat and that, that's a problem sometimes because I'm not used to it. So, yeah, li I should listen to other people's advice and train, eat, train to eat, and uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. That yeah. makes total sense. myself this year that I was actually in a bit of an energy deficit which I didn't know about because I eat loads but I actually did a bit of work with Rini McGregor who helped me kind of realize that actually with ultra running everything we do is at the extreme end of the spectrum so eating also has to be at the extreme end of the spectrum and I think I've worked with Rini and another sports nutritionist who have really helped make sure that you are getting enough fuel because if you underfuel yourself then the problems that you're going to get it's a very hard like big hole to dig yourself out of so take the time to incorporate nutrition and figure out how much you need to fuel your runs yeah maybe get the support from nutritionists yeah and it, yeah and it doesn't take long like i've worked with one for a month and we kind of fixed everything that was wrong but it's then given me a framework that I can work from forever. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> How did you know something was wrong? So it's really weird. I ended up in a few races last year getting an upset stomach on the run, which we thought was because i just eaten something dodgy. But Rini had said to me, actually, I think your hormones might be out of whack. So we had some blood tests done and they were. So it was, yeah, an upset stomach, which actually wasn't food related. It was hormone related. Um, that then showed that I was in this deficit. But luckily we caught it really quickly because, you know, the experts, they're experts for a reason. So, <laughs> you know, if you, I had a gut feeling that there was something wrong, but I didn't know what it was. So yeah, find, there's people out there that can help you. And yeah, finding the right person will just make your life a million times easier. Even like sometimes it's expensive, but yeah. 100%. What about something you definitely would not advise people to do in an ultra? <laughs> so, trying something for the first time on a race, I know everyone says that, but just, you know, if you can practice with the food, try and practice, have a look at the race website and see what they're going to be having at the race and at least you can practice with that food, even if you've got no intention of using it and you're taking your own stuff gels can fall out of your pockets and then you can stress out at least if you've practiced eating a bagel before you know you'll be okay and just because someone else says they like a food it doesn't mean you have to so find what's right for you i'd say don't try and think new and it's really funny actually because i was racing um last year and I did one of the ultra x races and I'd done a talk to a group who were also at the Ultra X races and said, like, they said exactly that, don't take anything new. Anyway, I was running with one of the guys, one of the black trail runners, and I was running with him, and I got out my peanut m and I was like, would you like one? And he went to get one, he goes, oh no, because you said not to try something new. And it was so funny that he was like saying that back to me. So I would say, yeah, don't try something new because you never know. And it, it may well affect you and affect your race. And, you know, maybe think, oh, I'll try that in my training next time and I'll use it next time. But yeah, don't. Don't do it on the race. I love that. So you were just testing him. <laughs> that wasn't, I actually had forgotten that I'd said that to him. But yeah, yes. Yeah. When we talk about nutrition, I think we often forget hydration. Mm. So again, hydration, it's going to depend very much on what your race is and like how hot it is. Is it going to be windy? Is it going to be dry? Is it going to be humid? Like all those, the temperature is really, really key. Is it winter? Is it summer? But we do know that hydration is really, really important. So, you know, if you just 10% dehydrated, it's going to have quite a significant effect on your performance. So you want to stay hydrated, but then you don't want to overhydrate. So it's that balance. 
And I think that's the bit that people get really confused with. And a rough rule of thumb is generally that most people can't consume more than 750 mils of fluid in an hour, most people. So, you know, in the winter, you might be having something like, I don't know, 100 mils every 20 minutes, but in the summer, you might be having more like 250 mils every 20 minutes. And that's a really nice gauge to keep on top of it. But like I said earlier, like, I tend to prefer to have my calorie, my energy through a drink, which means I'm hydrating, but also I tend to choose a product that's got electrolytes in it as well. So I'm ticking all those things off, but you don't have to do that. You know, you could have, a lot of people will carry a bottle of water and a bottle of electrolytes and then have gels. And that's absolutely fine to do because some people just find the measurement of that a little bit easier. Like they know if they've drunk a bottle of electrolyte, that's, you know, 700 mils, 700 milligrams of sodium and they've had 500 mils of water and they've had their 60 grams of carbs and it's just easier for them. I'm not so worried about that because I can generally tell what I need and I can, you know, kind of top it up as I need to. So hydration is important and one of the difficulties is that the symptoms for overhydration and the symptoms for under dehydration are very similar. So the only, I suppose, the big key thing will be that if you're urinating frequently and it's very clear you're probably overhydrating. and if you're not urinating as much and it's very very dark then you're probably a bit dehydrated so that's one symptom that's slightly different but in terms of things like nausea um, sometimes people say they feel a little bit kind of off color it could be either or so have a little think you know have I been drinking lots or have I not been drinking enough and really gauge where you might be at and, and, and think about that so Hydration is important, getting the sodium content, particularly in ultra races, it's really important. We know that in ultra races, like once you get over sort of four or five hours, you're looking at needing somewhere between 700 to 1,000 milligrams of sodium per litre of fluid. So don't neglect the salt. So don't neglect the salt. And now everybody's different. I think it's really, really important to highlight that. So some people will be really salt, really heavy, salty sweaters, and so they'll lose a lot of sodium. They may, need, may have much higher. Um, and others may be a lot less and so you might not need quite as much so don't just be gauged by what your mate's doing try and work out what's right for you because it's so so important to get that right and it is honestly I think that can be the make or break of a race the the, the salt salt balance so it's the nausea and the, and the sort of real and the vomiting as well like it's often related to just not taking enough salt in or overdoing the salt you know I've had both ends of the spectrum do you always need to use a, a specific electrolyte product or can you just put a pinch of salt into your squash? Or yeah, water? you could you could use a pinch of salt into your, so just un, like a quarter of a teaspoon of salt is about 50 milligrams of sodium. So it's just knowing what you're putting in and understanding what you need. But you could just add salt. You can use salty food, like a lot of people will use things like crisps and peanuts because then they're getting some additional nutrition as well. Um, you could use an electrolyte tab if you want to, or you can even use like salt sticks or salt caps. So again, everybody's different. I know like when I've worked with Holly, she likes salt caps, although as she gets towards the end of a race, when she's quite dehydrated and quite tired, she finds it quite difficult to swallow salt caps, then she'll, she'll t um, change to electrolyte tab in her water. Um, and Damien as well, he prefers to put in products into his bottle rather than kind of taking things. So everybody's very different. Yeah, and it's interesting that you said that Holly prefers one thing early on in the race and then one thing later on in the race. Like, don't think you have to stick with the same thing? Yeah. I think that's really interesting. Yeah, just be careful what you're putting in your body. You know, I I kind of, I cut out a lot of the sugar, uh, like from day one. I was like, look, I know it doesn't make me feel good. And I, I went to sort of unsweetened, naturally sort of sweet stuff, really. Um, I'm not really a chocolate fan anyway, but I, for the Marathon de Saab itself, when I was going from day, my nutrition was, was very basic stuff, you know, nuts and dried fruit and stuff like that and that worked for me perfectly and i never had any tummy troubles i never had things but a lot of the guys that i saw that were out there with these you know and it's not to i know what works for some people works but a lot of these guys that were out there with the gels and putting these sashes in the thing they, they were having they were having troubles you know they, they were um and a lot of them were ditching them day two day three um so yeah honestly it's amazing, like, uh, and, uh, yeah, it was, honestly, people uh, have, mate, you haven't got any of them uh, sugar-free electrolytes, and you're like, yeah, I have for a lot of money, uh, but, yeah. 
Subscribe free on YouTube and follow me on Instagram for more gear tests and training advice. I also have a book out too for everything you need to know about trail running in one handy package, including more gear advice, nutrition tips, recipes, ways to beat injury, and training plans from 10K to 50K. Check it out here.